going on you guys back with another video coming to y'all real and raw unfiltered i didn't feel like connecting a phone to the uh snapchat filter because i would have to keep stopping it so i'm gonna just let it roll but the topic i want to get into today is actually a part two which is can the narcissist change and heal but i want to do more of a deep dive I want to talk a little longer about like what made the narcissist become that way. Well, what made the person a narcissist in the first place? And my theory is, and y'all probably heard me mention this in other videos, is it has a lot to do with the upbringing. Because, a, a, you know, a child isn't born a narcissist. We're not born narcissists. You know, you have to be made that way. And you can be made that way for one or two ways because you were put on this high pedestal to be the best and you know during your upbringing they expect you to be the best at all times and they put inside your mind that you're you're better than the rest you know even if they lost a competition the parent would normally take the child home and reward them because in my mind you're still a winner and that's a good thing to do to your kid to constantly motivate them but at the same time where's the reality in that because we have to grow up to realize that no well at some point they're going to grow up to realize that i did not win you know and when they didn't learn that early on that you can't win them all they're going to grow up thinking that I can win them all and I'm always the best and they're gonna develop this sense of entitlement. Like I'm supposed to get the prize just because I participated, you know? So I feel that that's one way that narcissists are created. And another way is being neglected when they're invisible during the upbringing and they don't get the rewards that all the other kids got. And they didn't get the chance, the opportunity to participate in a lot of things. You know, they didn't get that fair shot. That is what also could have made them a narcissist. By always being, you know, left out, being pushed to the side. Or having nice things taken away from them like they're not deserving of it. You know, because in a way that devalues a person. So when that child grows up into adulthood they use devaluation as a form of abuse. You know, when they can't have their way with a person, that comes up under the punishment when they lose control. So they lost, the, they never had the control in their hand as a child to ever get the opportunity to win. So when they grow up into adulthood, they get that, they're gonna make sure, yeah, I got the power, I'm in control of this. Notice how a lot of narcissists, they throw around power. You know, like, I'm, I'm going to get this straight. I'm going to run this. It's just the way that they speak when they feel so highly of themselves and confident that, you know, I got this. And they're not saying it in a good, confident way. You know, they're saying it in a very arrogant way, you know, based off this huge ego. So those are the two ways that a person can grow up and become a narcissist. Now, as far as the question, can they change and can they heal? Well, the thing about it is they have to recognize that there is an issue with the way they are. And it's not normal. Like, again, once that child grows up to see that in, real, in the real world, when you compete with someone to win a prize and if you know they lose fair and square you really lost you know it's a good thing that you tried you know you may have the skills you may you know you may be picked by something else but in this competition you lost you know and there's no discussion after that like you know move on <laughs> try again how about that try again but narcissists they had temper tantrums as children you know which is normal as a child 
unless that uh, parent made the child think, of course, that they're the best and they deserve the win just because they woke up this morning. Now, and that's delusional thinking at best. Now, when they grow up, they still have these temper tantrums, but it just gets worse. And the people who end up being, you know, up under the narc's control and used as narc supply, they really, really, really take it out on them, you know, when they lose control. So they can't take it out on the people who they really wanted to when they were coming up. So they just went off into their own little zone and, you know, just let off steam. But into adulthood, they do it right there in the person's face. They do it in front of the crowd. They don't care who see them acting out that way, you know. And sadly, some people are going to excuse that. They're going to always give toxic behavior a pass because a person is able to put on such an act for so long into making people believe that, you know, well, even the ones, now this goes to the, the um, narcissists who always got a short end of the stick when they were coming up. So now they feel entitled to get it no matter if they didn't work hard for it. You know, and they could be some of the worst narcissists too to deal with, you know. But again, I almost lost my train of thought. But when they grow up to think that I don't have to work hard to accomplish, you know, the my goals and things like that, it should just be a given because why do I have to do all that? Because everybody else did it. Other people went to school, you know, for years and years before they graduated. And sometimes they still didn't work in their field right away, you know, for whatever reason. They may have to relocate to somewhere that they really weren't able to do right then and there, you know, for whatever reason. But the thing about it, when it comes to a narcissist, they don't feel like that the rules should apply to them. And that's the sad part when it comes to narcissists growing up and thinking that they don't uh, see a problem with themselves. And again, can they change? They have to see the problem. And they, they normally they're not going to see it because it's so deeply rooted in them to they feel that that is the normal life to live. The same goes with the narcissist who was who didn't have to work hard for nothing and they, they were given everything. They don't feel like they have to work that hard. And the narcissist who didn't get it and didn't even get a fair trial. It's just like, they feel like, no, time's out for, for um, you know, for counting me out. You know, they, they get biggity then and they feel like, I don't have to wait. I'm not waiting anymore. You know, I did that for a long time when I was coming up and forget about that. I'm gonna get what's for me. And it's like, well, you still have to wait in line like everybody else. So both of them are really no different you may see the narcissist who got the short end of the stick coming up as the more aggressive one. You know, don't be surprised. You may see them as the more aggressive one because they hold in more of the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, and the frustration, you know, coming up into adulthood and always feeling like they, you know, they just carry that with them into adulthood. Now, the other narc, the entitled narcissist, they do also but the, the, the narcissists who had it harder, they, their entitlement looks a little different from the narcissists who got everything they want when they were coming up. You know, the, the parents, the caregivers or whoever, they never told them no. They always gave them what they want. Whereas the other one, they were always told no and they never got what they wanted. And they probably was the sweetest child. And not saying that the other child was <laughs> sweet. They are just sweet and spoiled, if that even makes sense. But yeah, so that's my deep dive on can a narcissist change and heal? Again, they have to recognize the problem within them. And a lot of times they're not going to see that they have a problem. You know, it just is what it is with them, whatever that means. So you just have to be very, very careful when dealing with these type people 
and try your best to deal with them without, you know, going insane. Because trust me, if you think too hard about how can I make this normal, you're going to lose your mind right along with them because there's nothing normal about entitlement. I mean, you know, there is a sense of entitlement that some of us should have. Like, you've worked hard for a position, you know, that you know you can fulfill. But then there is this prejudice that's holding you from getting it, from getting that position, you know, for whatever reason or favoritism. And you know you should feel a little entitled, but you don't act out and throw it around that I'm the one for the job. You know, you still have that, that thing about you. You know how to be humble still. You know how to stay grounded and level-minded and you just kind of like, you know, you take the ill and you move on as hard as that may be. A lot of us still have to, you know, we move that way. I know I have. I have took a lot of losses when I should have won. And a lot of you probably could say the same thing. Now, narcissists, they're not just going to take it to the chest and move. <laughs> they're not. They're going to fight for it and, and, and act out, you know, and put on a show. And that show might include you know, like fishing for sympathy. They know how to put on a really, really good act. That's how they get a lot of supply. They know how to put on an act. They've been at it for a long time. So this is not something they just woke up and, you know, they know what to do. They've been doing it for a long time. So, and trust and believe they're just as miserable as they come. They are just as miserable as you see them lose they they wake up like that every day that's why there's no need to focus on karma and i know that it's easier said than done because you know a lot of us have really been let down and hurt and mistreated by narcissists and you want to see them get the payback but you know they're already living in their karma every day because look how they you know, look how they get along through life. That cannot be easy. You know, and that's just not normal. There's nothing normal about that. But I'm going to end this video here. I want to thank y'all for watching. Please leave your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe. If you didn't like the video coming in, please like going out. Don't hesitate to share my content on this channel, anything. I would gladly appreciate it hopefully it helps someone if you took something from this please leave a comment down below as i am trying to catch up with a lot of comments again y'all know life happens and sometimes it just take a hold of us and we feel like we could never go back to the things that we were doing on a regular but i'm trying to get back into uploading on a regular i work a lot every day except saturday and sunday and you know those days i try to get as much as rest as i can because for what to go right back to work on monday you know we gotta do that um something gotta pay the bills because <laughs> i'm not getting paid on here i can't tell the last time i got a youtube check or um you know any type of donations and y'all check out my link for um buy me a coffee i think it's called buy me a coffee um I got it in the uh, description box. If y'all would like to donate in that kind of way. Or if not, just donate by pressing the like button. Press the thumbs up. Press the notification bell so that you would know when I do get a chance to upload again. But check out the shorts. I upload shorts pretty regular because I have the time to do that. You know, it's just 30 to 60 seconds of content. So again, I appreciate y'all for being here, for being here so long. And I really appreciate the new subscribers. Thank y'all for watching and I will talk to you soon.